Hello, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Getting Started with an Email Threat Scan for Office 365. I'm Amber Noble, a Marketing Specialist here at Barracuda MSP, and I'm happy to be moderating today's session. Today, I'm joined by Andrew Brewton, Regional Account Director here at Barracuda MSP. During today's educational webinar, Andrew will walk us through the Email Threat Scanner tool for Office 365, highlighting its many advantages and ease of use. Learn how this cloud-based scan identifies risks that regularly go unnoticed so you can patch the holes in your defense. Before we get started, let's do some brief housekeeping. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to share them using the questions or chat panel to the right of the Zoom webinar screen. At the conclusion of the webinar, you'll be prompted to complete a brief polling survey. Please take a moment to tell us what you think so we can continually improve the content and quality of our online events. Now, without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to Andrew to begin today's presentation. Take it away, Andrew. Thank you very much, Amber. Again, this is Andrew Bridge. I'm one of the regional account directors here at Barracuda's MSP division. I'm very fortunate to spend some time with you guys today to talk about one of my favorite products, as well as something that's very dear and true to my heart with all the different rises of attacks coming through today. And what we're really going to talk about is how you look and identify phishing uh, attacks on a customer's Office 365 environment, leveraging one of the coolest tools we have available to all of our partners and prospects, the email threat scanner today. Let's talk a quick second about why this is so important. Email is going to become the number one threat vector to be able to trick small to medium businesses into sending money over broad to the hackers and making their lives much more enjoyable. Over 74% of these attacks are typically starting through a, a traditional phishing attack where they might be sending a link to redirect you to a, a landing page such as Office 365 that's a lookalike just to get admin credentials for the domain and be able to start spear phishing employees internally. Now, during the course of today, we're going to talk about a few layers of the actual security uh, posture your customer can have today. Traditionally, you start with just your main mail tenant such as Office 365 at the bottom. Now, of course, Barracuda was founded as a leader in the email security space and recently got nominated by Forrester as one of the leaders in enterprise email security. So we'll be able to dictate where you actually see the inbound or gateway level defense come into play from Barracuda's email security service. We'll touch upon why it's important to think about archiving. Uh, the coolest product we have today is artificial intelligence-based spear phishing prevention, which we'll touch on in a little second here, and of course, touch on phishing simulation and training as well. So some of the products that we'll be going through and highlighting how you use the email threat scanner to sell these types of service, we'll start with Managed Fish Line. If you guys have any customers with a compliance regulation such as HIPAA or PCI, you'll probably know now that there is now a mandate to include something called security awareness training. And that's exactly what Managed Fish Line does today. Fish Line basically is gonna be uh, email phishing campaign simulation, followed by training materials and testing modules to ensure your customers are improving their line of defense at the human firewall layer as well as adhering to certain compliances. Now, the benefit here is you don't have to worry about doing any of the work. It's all handled internally by Barracuda, making you look the rock star that you guys already are today. Sentinel, which is actually what the email threat scanner is based off of, is specifically designed for Office 365. We're turning into the actual APIs of Microsoft and then looking through the previous domain's history of email exchanges, looking at 40 different features or variables within a single email item to identify if it's a spear phishing attack. And before I move on, just to clarify the spear phishing versus phishing. Spear phishing is going to be the type of attack that's going to bypass any mail filtering system in existence today, except for Sentinel. And that's mainly because there's actually no malicious payload within the email item sent. And we'll actually review a couple of examples of this through the email threat scan demo today as well. Just as important though, you always have to have that gateway level of defense. And this is going to be ideal to block those traditional phishing attacks that typically are trying to get people to click on a link, enter in credentials uh, through malicious uh, links inside of an actual email. And of course, the email threat scanner. Now, if you're current Barracuda MSP partner today, at the end of this webinar, you can reach directly out to your rep and they'll be able to get you a link that you can use in a limited amount of times and run on as many domains as you want to. And this is gonna give you a report after about three to four hours of running of about a year's worth of history on that domain. It's gonna highlight the fraudulent emails that it captured You'll be able to filter by attacks. And my biggest recommendation is to review it with actual Barracuda MSP rep. We've done hundreds of these and can ideally show you exactly how you want to pitch it to the customer for all the services available to you. 
Now, just a quick enactment of how this attacks might work. So you start out with your email. This is going to be your traditional sender. It can actually come from a real email address that the hacker just got from maybe Gmail or AOL.com. And so it's not blacklisted. And now they're just going to send various links or types of phishing attacks just to try and get into the user's mailbox. This is the grade A style of phishing attacks where you'll send an Office 365 uh, account lockout email. That's just a hacker's uh, version of it. And then once the user actually enters in the domain, uh, their credentials, they now have access to that user's mailbox. From there, they're going to actually sit, try and get into other mailboxes on the domain, or just start impersonating the user, whether it be reaching out to your, the actual customers or internally to try and do some malicious activities such as wire transfers, blackmail, and so forth. Now, without further ado, I'm going to switch over to the actual email threat scan itself. Now, let's do this. Oh. With the email threat scanner today, all it takes is global admin credentials on a given domain. And again, this can be used a limited amount of times. Once you provide the credentials, it's going to run a report on a year's worth of the previous data. And it's going to show you how many different fraudulent emails, attacks detected, and so forth. Now, I talked about being able to position different products for different types of services based off the threat scan. So let's start out with probably the most common types of attacks, which is service impersonation. Now, these types of attacks will typically be caught by the gateway level defense. So for Barracuda, that will be called the email security with ATP, for example. Now, as we open up one of these attacks, what it's going to look at is the actual links within inside the email item itself. As we can see here from the analysis, first off, this is not a typical Microsoft email address that they typically send out from. So that's immediately a red flag to our system using the AI engine in the background. But more importantly as well, the most important thing here is the URL. It's a suspicious link, not actually directing it to a Microsoft website, but this is a common type of attack when someone will click on the sign in enter in the credentials, and now the hacker already has access to the entire uh, uh, customer profile and can start acting maliciously within inside the domain. Now, because of Sentinel, we're actually looking at various levels of defense. So we're looking at combining these types of malicious links, the different types of email addresses, and so forth. Let's take another look at another example here today. This is a very common one, DocuSign. Again, very similar to the previous one, though the email itself might look correct and look legitimate. In fact, it is not. What actually it signifies here is again, the email address used for DocuSign is not the same one that you've seen previously uh, inside the domain. But of course, also the URL itself is not going directly to DocuSign, more likely a malicious website trying to get more information from the end customer or end user in this situation. Again, these are the type of attacks that would be blocked by something we call link protection where we actually go ahead and rewrite every single link in the email itself to ensure after the customer clicks on it, we're gonna scan the website to make sure it's legitimate or contains any malware. If it is legitimate, you go right on through. If it's not, we'll actually go ahead and block the users from entering that website and giving away the credentials, helping to eliminate what we call account takeover today. Now with Sentinel itself and the email threat scan it comes into its own, it's looking at different types of attacks. Now, we talked about the difference between phishing and spear phishing. Artificial intelligence is now required to protect against the spear phishing types of attacks. The main reason being, again, there's no malicious content in the actual email. And this is a perfect example of one such email. And I've actually seen these types on a daily basis from my partners and working with them to get implemented the product itself. So what we're looking at here today is just a common request, just a little action required potentially from the owner of the business to the CFO. And you can always tell these types of spear phishing attacks where they basically say, are you available? All they're looking right here is just for a quick reply. They're not trying to make you uh, perform a specific action that's malicious at the time. Just actually recognizing that, hey, yep, got your email, I'm gonna reply right back. And usually that second follow-up email is gonna contain the action plan that the hacker wants you to do. Um, for one ex example, uh, a lot of common times they actually request you run out to the store, to Walmart, CVS, and go buy $500 worth of gift cards. Once you have that, please just scratch them off and then reply back to me with all the numbers on there. And this is how hackers get away with quickly getting all the valuable assets directly into their mailbox and bugger off at that point in time and not to worry about moving forward with that end customer. Now, the reason why you need Sentinel 
and the email threat scanner here is because we're looking at the actual text, this creates an unusual type of request, which is very common spear phishing. And again, it's not the typical address that the user typically emails from. So this quickly gets captured by Sentinel and the email threat scanner to prove the point here. Let's see here. Take another example here. Again, this is very similar to the ones earlier. We're asking for a specific action and a bad URL as well. Now, in this demo environment, we do not have the other example, which is a blackmail. Now, I'm sure without even to show you examples, you all have stories about these types of emails. These are the ones where they're basically saying, you're watching Naughty Pornography, uh, please send Bitcoin, otherwise we're gonna blast it out to the world. Again, a lot of times, this actually appears to be coming from the actual user's email address. And that's why it's been so successful, because it scares the lights out of the end customer that the person's already in the mailbox and has access to everything they need to know. A lot of times they're getting information from the dark web, like old passwords, for example, to really trick the end customer. Again, whenever you're looking at the blackmail type of attacks, if there's ever a request for Bitcoin, you know it's fraudulent right off the back. And Sentinel, recognizing this, would actually have as part of the analysis saying that because there was a Bitcoin request, we know this is absolutely fraudulent and will automatically block it moving forward for the customer. Clear this. One of the important things though, when you're talking about email security service, especially with uh, customers today, is impersonation. Unfortunately, we don't have it on the demo here today. But one thing you'll notice with any type of email threat scan, when you're looking at actual, actual users on the domain, 30% are typically highly likely to become victim to these types of attacks. And the main reasons for that is they probably handle things such as invoices, wire transfers, or hold an executive position at the organization where people would trust their emails coming from that user and act on it immediately for them. And that's where the security awareness training such as managed fish line comes into play. It's always great to make sure you take care of those initial 30% high risk employees, get them as trained as possible through a security awareness training program to make sure that their line of defense is rock solid. And after seeing the benefits and most likely how gullible a lot of these C levels can be, you probably want to go ahead and expand the program to the rest of the employees in the organization. So at the end of the day, you always have to work on the human firewall layer, as well as actually implementing services and technology to help on the back end as well. The other important thing to note with, uh, with Sentinel and the email threat scan, which unfortunately is not part of the demo here today, is talking about DMARC. So when we talk about DMARC, we're talking about brand hijacking. What we're really trying to do here is understand if there's any fraudulent senders pretending to be the customer's domain, for example, and then trying to spam their customers to try and get invoices paid or vendors paid and so forth. Now with Barracuda Sentinel and the email threat scanner, we can actually recognize if a domain has their DKIM and SPF records set up to the strongest degree and also be able to track whether or not uh, people outside of the normal areas that are sending the emails are actually fraudulent, such as coming from Vietnam or Laos, is the typical ones we see today. And then we go a step further and actually allow you to go ahead and try and block those messages through a few action items from Sentinel's dashboard. The final thing to talk about with Sentinel specifically is going to be the fact that it's the only true way to prevent spear phishing attacks today. Again, we reiterate the fact that these are typically not going to contain any malicious payload items in the actual mail itself. So without the use of artificial intelligence and using past data to create patterns, it's near impossible to go ahead and prevent these types of attacks. Now the other benefit, if you look at the product Sentinel, which again is what the email threat scan is based off of, the big value here is tying into your Office 365. We have what we call account takeover protection, which is gonna actually alert you anytime a customer goes ahead and is conveniently signing in from multiple occasions at once, typically signifying an account takeover is trying to occur. And it'll send you the alert so you can go ahead and reset the password for the customer to make sure that they're protected fully but it's also gonna go ahead and look to see if there's any forwarding rules in effect. And this is where cloud archiving service comes into play as well. Typical with a spear phishing attack, once a hacker's in the mailbox, they're gonna change forwarding rules. And they're gonna change these so they can actually prevent people from seeing the messages coming in or seeing the messages that the hacker is sending out at the same time. Now, unfortunately, if you do not have any archiving services in place today, there's no way to ensure you can capture all of those mail items if you do need to go ahead and press a lawsuit or file charges with the FBI through these types of attacks. With a cloud archiving service in place, such as Barracuda, 
you'll actually be able to have, go ahead and track all the email messages sent and received from that specific user profile, including the hackers. And that is going to be your best bet to try and work an actual case with the FBI or any other legal team regarding these types of attacks or potential e-discovery in the event that the customer uh, was hijacked and spanned out their actual end customers themselves and cost them a lot of money. In which case, sometimes the receiving customer that got hacked or spammed will actually profess legal charges against uh, your SMB customer. And for the most part, that's really all Sentinel is really doing today. It's really just making sure that we're at the second line of defense, always going above and beyond and trying to identify what the next new tack is today. Now, of course, spear phishing itself is over a $7 billion industry and it's rapidly growing. It's going to start to quickly surpass ransomware, which is the traditional style of attack through attachments, which of course is protected from the gateway of the defense. And for just a quick review today, that is really everything I had right now and pass it back over to Amber to see if we have any questions. Thanks, Andrew. I'm just going to go ahead and launch that poll I had mentioned at the beginning. If everyone could just take a quick second and give us some feedback, uh, it'll always help us improve some future webinars that we have going on. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions that you have not yet typed up, go ahead and throw them in the questions or chat panel, um, and we'll get to them right away. Any questions we don't get to today, we will follow up via email. Um, so we'll just give you guys a minute. Um, now, Andrew, while, while all that's going on in the background, uh, I know you've mentioned a few times that the, the demo we have here on screen is a little limited. Um, would you say that there's a lot more to see um, if somebody were to try this out, you know, and actually look at their, their mailboxes? Oh, 100%. The real best way to get a full idea of what both Sentinel, but more so the email threat scan, how it works and operates, is to go ahead and just try it out. Again, it works for any Office 365 domain that you have the global admin credentials for. And as soon as you run it, you can meet with yourself, uh, with uh, your current account manager, or with our new business team to review the threat scan itself. It really does paint a better picture, just given this is all sort of just a demo account, not actual malicious attacks occurring. But I've seen everything under the sun from a 300 employee customer with 34,000 fraudulent emails in a single year, all the way down to a five person shop with 300 email uh, threats inside the domain for the past year. Again, one thing to note, these hackers don't pick and choose who they're going after. They're casting the widest net possible. So in order to have the true security in place today, you're always looking to pair Sentinel as well as our email security service together. So speaking of Sentinel, we do have a question here from Jack. Um, is Sentinel stopping phishing and spear phishing attacks or would I also need fish line in place? What's really the difference between those two products? That's a great question. So Sentinel and email security service will be what's going to be tackling the phishing and spear phishing types of attacks. Where a managed fish line comes into play, this is the security awareness training program where we're actually going to be testing the users. So this is not to uh, prevent attacks from coming in, but education for the actual end users of the organization, where Sentinel and email security service are the actual tools to prevent the attacks from coming through really kind of securing that weakest chain and weakest link in the chain. Uh, absolutely. Unfortunately, human firewalls will always remain the weakest link. Okay, if anyone else has questions, again, I encourage you to put them in the chat. Um, you can also contact us at barracudamsp.com or contact your sales rep if you're already a partner with us. Um, now, I know another thing that wasn't really shown in this demo, but I, I know that we have is the, this comprehensive reporting that comes from the scan as well. It breaks down both, um, you know, the, the main users that are kind of under fire, um, where you're having the biggest, you know, issues pop up and stuff like that. So There's definitely a lot of benefit to running the threat scan. Again, fortunately for the demo environment, it is what it is. However, as soon as you can get the very first email threat scan running, again, this is gonna take you less than five minutes to actually set up. And the more time it is, just to wait for the scan to complete. The more mailboxes, the longer it'll take, but it's usually between one to four hours before you get the scan and can review it. That's the best way to really identify or even look internally, or as well as externally. And just one quick caveat, just the importance of this threat scanner. I actually used it with one of my MSP partners, uh, I think earlier this past year. And when we ran the scan itself, we actually saw that one of their larger municipality customers who has a director of IT was actually spear phishing the MSP. And so we quickly looked into the types of attacks and quickly recognized 
that actual end user, which was the director of IT, just to reiterate that fact, at this municipality, fell victim to a spear phishing attack and was spear phishing its actual vendors in itself. So not only is it ability to show whether or not you have customers that are currently in an account takeover situation, which in this case it was, but it'll also highlight with actual end customers really what's the main types of attacks going on. And I'm fairly confident that every scan you run, you will always find different types of threats all across the blackmail, the traditional phishing, as well as spear phishing as well. And I, I think it's an important highlight here that, you know, the scan itself is free. You know, we always mm. like free things, but that's especially, you know, wonderful that, you know, there's not any sort of tie-in of, oh, I have to do this and that before I can actually, you, you get to see the results for free. You get to peek in behind that closed door and really see where the issues are happening. So again, if anyone would like to try the scan, you can find it at barracudamsp.com slash scan. I put it in the chat and we did get a few more questions. Um, Here's a good one. Uh, so how does Barracuda differ from companies like No Before? So with No Before itself, um, that is one of the close competitors to our managed fish line offering. The core difference with No Before is the MSP is on the hook for doing majority of all the work. They do have some pre-built campaigns, but it's going to be up to you to fine tune it for your customers' requirements. It's going to be up to you to make sure you run the campaigns on a monthly basis. It's key to actually separate the campaigns over a two-week period of time because you don't want to send the same email uh, phishing simulation to all employees at the exact same time. Uh, we've seen that here uh, before we actually had Fishline and used No before, and very quickly every single rep's like, don't click on that, it's a phishing scam, or it's a phishing uh, test. And so what we try to do is put a big emphasis on constantly staying up to date on new types of attacks, changing our attacks quarterly, but also mainly doing all the work for you. That's the biggest holdup we keep getting from other partners that have looked to do these services, it's just the time it takes to get set up and deployed. Whereas Barracuda, you don't have to worry about any of that. Well, that's a great question. And uh, as far as any questions on pricing go, we we'll definitely call and talk to your rep or contact us here at Barracuda. Um, but again, the scan itself is free to take a look at, you know, what's, what's hiding in your inbox and in your customer's inbox. Um, and yes, the, today's webinar has been recorded, and so not you know immediately, but once I've had a few minutes to pull the recording together, uh, there will be a link that I can send out uh, for anyone who would like it, so then you can review this and review the demo. And I just want to reiterate, guys, one thing you do after this webinar today is please reach out to us to get that link to the email threat scan. I cannot express how important and how cool, awesome, and perfect of a tool it is, and as a member, Say it, it is absolutely 100% free, no obligations. It is the best sales tool in the world when we're talking about email security services. Okay, um, so I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, again, you know, I the, the demo was excellent, but to really see what this can do for you guys, I again really encourage you take a look at the scan. Just run it once, get an idea of what else you're not seeing on our demo version, because again, we're limited with how many you know fake attacks we can actually come up with. But you know, it's I think you should really take this opportunity, check out the scan, and uh, just just see what you're missing. You know, you you never know until you look. And uh, thank you again for for joining us for today's webinar. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks it was, for having it was me. Great having you here. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank you, everyone.